Welcome to the Plant Trainers Podcast, where we're helping people improve their quality of life through nutrition and fitness. And now, your hosts, nutrition and wellness coaches, international speakers, Adam and Shoshana Chaim. Hey, I'm Adam Chaim. And I'm Shoshana Chaim, and we are Propelled Propelled by by Plants. Plants. Today, we bring to you episode 361, Ways to Stay Active This Summer. In this episode of the Plant Trainers Podcast, we share ways that you could stay active this summer or really just throughout the year, whether you're still in social isolation or whether you are out mingling with other people again. You know, maybe it's just you and your pet. Maybe you're living with your parents. Maybe you have a big family, whatever it is, or maybe just a couple, whatever it is, you're able to get out there and move, even though a lot of the gyms might be closed or you might want to be saving money on activities that you used to be doing. So we're going to give you a lot of great ideas for being active, moving, exercise with your family unit, whatever that is. And I think it's going to be a really good opportunity for people to gain some ideas that they may not have thought about and hopefully implement them and become more active because sitting for so long is not really the best thing to be doing. So head to our Instagram tomorrow and post your ideas on how to be active. Be sure to tag us in your activity posts and you may be the lucky winner of one of these Plant Trainer Training for Life t-shirts. Enjoy the show. With Father's Day just a few days away, I wanted to remind everyone that I put together this really short ebook with so many amazing ideas and tips on ways for fathers, for dads to really figure out how to improve their lives and to be able to make time for all they want to do, even if they have a full time job and a family. And I was inspired to put these tips together and share them with you because it's something that I was able to figure out and why should you have to figure that out if I already did that for you. So it's a really short ebook and you could pick that up at planttrainers.com slash shop. And even though dads are not the best at sharing their feelings, this book is certainly going to be one to help you get through that. So if you have a father or dad in your life, pick it up for them and uh, hopefully it helps out. And now for a moment of gratitude. I am grateful for everything that nature offers us from the trees to the grass to the stars at night. There is no limitation on what we can learn and what we can enjoy. And I'm grateful for the weather getting warmer and being able to be outside more and enjoy the fresh air and really having the opportunity to be active in nature. Let's do it. Let's do it. Here we go. Here we go. So today's information is for sure evergreen, but we've also kind of pinpointed it a little bit more to what's going on in the world. We've recorded this about two weeks earlier, so who knows what it's going to look like for you in your city, if it's the same as it was two weeks ago, if things have opened up and been better, if things have gotten worse, hopefully not, and closed back up again. But regardless, we know that this summer is going to look different for a lot of people because people plan trips, people plan hiking, they plan camping, they they have camps for their kids, they go to the gym or they train triathlon, whatever it is, lots of things have been canceled this year. Or maybe you're listening to this in the future when it's not during this 2020 pandemic time, but it's just great ideas for weekends, for day to day, if you don't want to spend a lot of money on general activities. So we've kind of broken it down into different sections. And we're really excited to share some of our ideas with you. The key is here is that sedentary lifestyles increases your chances of mortality. It doubles the risk of cardiovascular disease, diabetes, all of the other risks that come along with being overweight and depression and anxiety is big too, right? If we don't move. Yeah, it's super important for us to move. You know, I I teach phys ed all year long and I work with clients and students so often and we've really come into a situation where most people found a new routine where they're getting used to sitting in front of their computer and being on a Zoom call or being in an online class and We've lost track of how important and how much of a priority our fitness really needs to be because if we don't move our body, our mind is not going to function very well and we tend to get lazy because 
that's the opportunity that we're presenting to ourselves. So we need to find ways to stay active because the more active we are, the better we're going to sleep, but also the more productive we're going to be. Our mind and mentality is going to work in a much more productive way. And especially having come out of this, you know, 2020 pandemic, think about small steps because maybe you're used to going out and, you know, the May 2-4 weekend, you do a big hike and you do something else and and you're used to doing these amazingly big things, but maybe you haven't been moving. Maybe your heart's not where it, where it normally is. Maybe your overall fitness isn't where it is because we have been so sedentary over this extended winter time, pandemic time. So start small and work your way up, especially if you're somebody who's at risk for specific cardiovascular issues. And so many people were really excited about the summer and excited to get out of their houses and the pandemic's ending and people are able to go do whatever, but that's not really what's happening or how things are shaping up. Camps are closed, activities are not running, races are not happening. And so we need to find ways to still stay active, but keep a very positive mindset. Because if we start to get depressed about it and bring ourselves down, it's really going to have a huge impact, not only on ourselves, but on the people around us. So we need to stay positive during this time, elevate our mood, continue to stay active and figure out ways to do that. And that's what we're going to be sharing with you today. Yes. So guys, get your calendars out, start scheduling some of these ideas in so that you make sure that you do them, you make sure that you get moving. And the number one thing that I, that kept coming back to me is just exploration, right? I've been exploring every nook and cranny of the house, cleaning things out, reorganizing, but I'm ready to get out there and I'm ready to start exploring the nature again, kind of like my moment of gratitude. And hiking is something that can be super, super fun. Maybe you haven't done it before, maybe you have. And keep in mind, some of the hiking areas might be closed because they're confined areas and they haven't yet been open again, but you could find local ravines that you didn't necessarily know about before. You could find, we have, we always, when we go hiking or when we go walking, we normally drive somewhere far and somewhere cool, but there's so many things in our backyard that we didn't really realize for the first 10 years living in this area. The truth is, if you look at a map of your area, whether it's a Google map or a physical map, you might find little parks or paths that you didn't even know existed. Some bike paths that you might not know, some ravines, some parks. And and so take a look at your local area, the small area around you and kind of see if there are places, even streets that you've never been to, go and check them out. And you can do that by biking as well, right? So maybe you're going to take your bike out as a family and start biking around to find where those paths are so that you know where to go to next time or find bike paths in the area. But whatever you do, make sure, please, that you're bringing proper food, proper supplies, enough water. I think probably people haven't been hydrating enough during this time, too. And you really want to make sure that you're staying hydrated, especially if you're not used to being in the outdoors. One of the things that I love to do is do my running really early in the morning when it's still dark outside and the stars are still out because not only is it isolating from everybody else, I don't have to deal with cars or people, but I get to see the city in a very different perspective. Mm -hmm. And quite often when I travel, that's what I do. I run early in the morning and I go to the main areas of a city and it's a completely different place when you see it early in the morning than when you go back to it later in the day. So if you're someone who always goes to some place at a certain time of day, I challenge you to do it at a very different time and see the difference because it allows you to really feel that area in a different way. And it's it's a really nice way to check things out. And if you're not going outside to bars and restaurants and, and friends' houses necessarily at night, get out and see the stars. Go out on your balcony, walk down the street, walk to a park, take a flashlight with you, take the dog with you if you have to, whatever it is. But, you know, go out there and see the stars and look for constellations. Use this as a learning opportunity to explore the universe or even... You know, if you're just going to a park because there are no hiking that's open near you, take your phone with you and find an app that helps you detect what kind of tree it is or what Mm. kind of plant it is or what kind of bush it is or what kind of berry that is and explore. And it might not be exercise per se, but it's movement and it's learning and it's 
feeding the brain and feeding the soul. What it is, is it's bringing awareness to not only you, your body, but also your surroundings and what nature is offering. So take some time to reflect, to bring awareness to the things that are around you that we take for granted that you might not see on a normal day. This is a great opportunity to actually see the differences and bring awareness to the beauty that's around you. So let's get into some games that you could play. And again, whether you're a family of adults or you're a family with young children, these are some fun games that you can do. And when you're on your walk, you can actually pre-plan some activities that you could do. So every time you see a squirrel or every time you see a dog or every time you see a maple tree, it's like you could punch do... punch buggy game. Yeah, like punch buggy. But <laughs> instead of punching punch. everybody, you could do burpees. You could do push-ups. If you mm. don't want to touch the ground, you could do squats. You could do jumping squats. There's so many different things and activities that you could do to make going on a regular walk fun, but more active. That sounds like you're with somebody else to do those kind of things. But what if you're on your own? You could still do it on your own. You just, yeah. you, it, you might feel a little sillier, but hey. I mean, you were you not going to play tag with yourself or. Well, right. So tag is a game that you'd want to play. You're not going to throw a ball with yourself. You're going to try to find somebody else to do that with, right? Yes, So definitely. what if you're on your own? How do you what kind of games can you do? Just like fitness chat, like you see something, you do an activity. Like it's like the card game almost, right? Yeah, yeah. We have this on on our Instagram. We have that card game where you pull cards out of a deck and whatever number it is, it's associated with an activity or you spell out your your birthday or you spell out your name and there's different activities associated with different level. With so you're just saying you see a certain kind of tree. Oh, I got to do this activity. Yeah. Or, or every you time you go squirrel. to turn a corner before you turn the corner, mm. you, you know, you stop and you do 10 squats, whatever it is that that you want to do. So there are games that you could play individually. Mm -hmm. um, but even if you're socially distancing walking with somebody else or running with somebody else, you can still do these things with other people. Right. You don't necessarily have to touch them. And if you're still at the point where you can't touch people or can't touch the same things as people, play. you could play ball with rubber gloves. Or you can kick a ball, right? Or you, you can, can play soccer and kick a ball or yep. football, depending on where you live in the world. But using your feet, you're not actually touching the ball with your hands. So that could be a way to keep it safe, right? And what is that game called with that little trampoline where you throw the ball on the Spike trampoline? Ball? Spike ball, right? So as a, as a family, maybe even individually, you could use the agility ball, mm -hmm. right? That's that little ball that's kind of bumpy all over so when you bounce it it bounces in different areas diff you don't know where it's going to go so yeah. that's a game that you can play uh by yourself as well there's so many games i'm sure people can come up with follow other the ones, leader right? right so if you're listening to this on time or if you're listening to this the week that it comes out or a week or two go back to the wednesday post when this comes out and we have a little post up where you can write some of your other ideas to help other people along cool all right so you can head out to the parks, right? Mm -hmm. The actual apparatuses have been closed for quite a while and maybe they're open in your area already. But if they aren't, you still have the grassy area. Yeah. And it's kind of cool how people have just been taking an area for themselves and being really respectful of other people's space. And the parks have been a little bit busier than we're used to yeah, seeing Yeah, we them. went out to the park and there was a group of people over here that was doing their own thing. There was a people over here doing their thing. We were over here doing our thing. So everybody's kind of being smart with their distancing in the park, but still able to enjoy the area that the park offers. And bring a picnic blanket, bring some food, bring some water, bring some sun shelter and camp out for the day or for a couple of hours. Be there, be active, stand up and toss a ball with whoever it is that you're with or kick a ball or do some burpees, whatever it is. And then also just be out in the nature for a little bit longer because you have your food and your water and what have you with and you. And those fields in the park are a great place to adapt your sports that you're playing. And so like if you're going to throw frisbee with somebody, you might need to wear a glove. It depends on your comfort level or how things are going when you're listening to this. But we mentioned the soccer you could kick. You don't have to worry so much. Same with football. You could throw. There's a lot of things that you could be doing in the park. So consider this, that the football or soccer posts are still up and some people are bringing hula hoops and they're using either the twist ties or the rope, um, rope or a bungee cord to hang the hula hoop from the net so that 
you can kind of have target aim and target mm. practice, or yep. you don't need a goalie in the net if you're just a smaller family unit who's participating in the game together. And, and I thought you, that was really cool. Yeah, and if you are a family, like you could set up some kind of relay race to do as a family and have fun together, just running back and forth, doing different silly activities. Being active outdoors as a family, it, it's a great thing to be doing. And being a, or having been an elementary school phys ed teacher, adapted games are something that I'm very used to. So, you know, little kids might not be able to play ultimate frisbee kind of thing. So we would break the game down. But ultimate frisbee is a really great way to, you know, teach because you don't run so much with the ball. So it's or with the, with frisbee. the frisbee. So it's a great way to teach kids how to play. And you could do the same thing with the football. So if you're not going to tackle and you're just going to say, okay, I have my hands, I'm not going to touch my face, or I'm going to wear gloves, and I'm going to use lots of hand sanitizer, or whatever it is you're doing, use the ultimate frisbee game to play football, to play, you know, to play soccer, to play different games so that your bodies aren't bumping into each other. Yeah. yeah. There's so many games that we could play, and I'm sure you could come up with more. But what happens if the weather isn't so good, and we don't want to go to the park when it's raining, or it's thunder and storming, and and it's too windy or cold? Like, What are other things that we could do when it's the weather's not great? I just wanted to take a moment to thank everybody who's been contributing to my 10K a day virtual community event in support of the Make-A-Wish Foundation. And if you're interested in joining me for the rest of the month of June, I'm running 10K a day. You could bike, run, walk 10K a day, or do anything active. And let me know, let the community know by going to planttrainers.com slash 10KADAY and join in and support any way that you can. Really appreciate you getting more active this month. That's what this is all about and supporting a -A Make-A-Wish Foundation as well. Now, back to the show. What are other things that we could do when it's the weather's not great? So Russell and I came up with some minute to win it games inside the house. So if you've seen that on TV or you can look it up and we actually, we put that on TikTok and it got a lot of attention on TikTok where we took some ping pong balls and some of those red cups and we put a heavier cup inside and we came up with different strategies for hitting the ball or throwing the ball against the wall and it has to bounce and then bounce into the The one actually on TikTok is the pencil throw. Right. So because the the video that I took was of Russell of of the ping pong one. So we didn't want to put him on the TikTok. But yeah, so you can do all different types of strategy games with the ping pong balls and you don't need to have the beer at all. (laughs) You just need the ping pong balls and the cups or, you know, kind of taking pencils and you bounce it off the eraser and trying to get it into the cup. You can use ping pong ball or any kind of ball that you have in the house with rope or with bungee cords and you could try to drop the ball into the garbage can. There's so many different ideas. So if you look that up or get creative on your own, you can definitely do that too. If you don't have a ping pong table in the house like we do, we're lucky enough to have the space and the ping pong table, Mm -hmm. you can still buy ping pong rackets and ping pong balls if you have a wooden floor and an open wall you could play more of a squash or uh what's that other game called handball not handball squash or i guess it's pickleball something like that racquetball racquetball squash yeah those things (laughs) you (laughs) can play tennis without with you know without a without a net you could still find ways to play and be a little bit active of but that's going to depend on the space that you have because we're right. talking about doing that indoors, right? Yeah. So someone who doesn't have the space to do that probably won't be using a badminton racket or squash racket or racket ball against their wall in a small apartment. Right. There is no limit to the amount of exercise videos, yoga videos, Pilates videos, HIIT workouts, mm-hmm. you name it, that are on TV or on YouTube or what have you as well. So you can definitely check those out and you could do those in a limited amount of space. The other thing you could use instead of a ball in the house might be get a hacky sack and try to see how uh, how many times you can keep it in the air using your feet, using your arms, using your body, whatever. And so that's a good skill coordination activity that anybody could do in any kind of space. And for those of you who want to work your own creative minds or have little kids or medium-sized kids and want to give them activities to keep them busy, having one person at a time 
choose a video. So you have to search and look for that video or create your own, your own workout or game. And each week or each day, somebody else in the family is responsible for leading everybody else. Mm. And you can't say no unless it's dangerous or, or what have you. But, you know, giving, giving the younger ones the opportunity to stand up and be a leader and get creative and everybody be like, oh, wow, that was the best workout and really try to encourage them to flex their muscles moving forward. No pun intended. And not just their (laughs) physical muscles, but their mental muscles as well. So it's important that we remember that being active is going to help promote mental activity and that's going to help us perform at a higher level regardless with what we're doing. And don't forget to use the stairs. So you have, if you're living in a cottage and you have stairs in your house, or if you have stairs in your apartment building, building, or maybe you just have two or three steps outside your house, the front of the house, those can be really useful too. And that leads me to say, no matter what it is that you're doing, especially if we recommended it today, please make safety first. Uh, please make sure Priority. that and yeah, anything that you're using in terms of equipment is safe. If you're on stairs, make sure those are safe stairs. Make sure that you're taking the proper precautions. Riding a bike, please wear a helmet. Please don't listen to music while you're biking. Make sure that your ears are available for traffic. All of those big safety tips, please take into consideration. And there's a lot of great tools that you could use if you do want to listen to music while you're on your bike or while you're out for a run that don't block your actual ear, the bone condenser headphones that work on Bluetooth. And I could link to it on the show notes so people could find it because it's I use it when I ride or when I run mostly. And it's a it's a great piece of equipment. So what we can actually do is to link in the show notes some of the ideas that we talked about today that they might want to order, mm-hmm. we can put those there so that they can easily find it. Mm-hmm. We could also link to some of our Instagram posts where we had the activities for indoors, like mm-hmm. the alphabet thing and the card game and, and different activities or challenges that we've had that we could put out there. I mean, there's so many things that people can be doing to stay active this summer. And while it's not the same as every other summer where they're not going to be able to do the regular things that they do or that they've done before, like travel or be in a camp environment or be as social or doing your Ironman triathlon or shorter distances. Things are different right now and we need to find ways to adapt, but stay active and still make fitness a priority because if we lose track of our fitness, we don't make it a priority. It totally affects our mood, our attitude and the way we're going to perform in every aspect of our lives. So it's super important to really stay active, find ways to do that. And and these are just some ideas to help you get to that place. So to make you accountable, if you need accountability, find an accountability partner or plan it into your schedule already. Start talking to your family or other individuals who you might want to be exercising with. You can also tag us, like we said, at Plant Trainers on Instagram or whatever social media you're using to be like, look, I did it. I did it. Can you think of any other ways to get their rears into gears? I love that. I mean, just just think about some way to be accountable. And if you need to use us as an accountability partner by tagging us on social media so we see it and we know that you did it, that's going to help you. And we're happy to be there to support you. And if you did by accident skip the introduction, head over to that Wednesday post and post your ideas for being active this summer because somebody's going to get a Training for Life t-shirt. Yeah. Yeah. Adam's wearing it now. He's pointing for those of you who are not on YouTube right now. Right. Love it. Perfect. Great. Short and sweet. Done. To the point. Hope you guys got something out of that and uh, we'll see you next time. Yeah. Be well, guys. Take care of yourselves. Stay active. Stay healthy. Eat well. Sleep well. And have a great summer. Peace. Thank you all so much for listening to this edition of the Plant Trainers Podcast. We want to make sure that you subscribe on iTunes, Google Play, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, or any other podcasting platform. We really appreciate the feedback we receive from you. Every time we get a five-star rating or review on iTunes from one of our fans, it really helps other people find us just like you did. Thanks so much to our patrons. To become a patron, visit us at patreon.com slash plant trainers, even supporting us with $1 
really makes a difference in the quality of the show. And don't forget to connect with us on Instagram and Twitter. Our handle is at Plant Trainers. Like Plant Trainers on Facebook, join our newsletter, and check out our website at planttrainers.com for awesome recipes, a list of our services, and of course, our latest podcast. We encourage you to email your questions to info at planttrainers.com so that we can help you improve your quality of life through nutrition and fitness. So we hope we've inspired you today. Join us again next time and and have have a a healthy healthy day. day. Or is that too corny? It's a little cheesy.